What's good, everybody? You are tuned into episode four of Greatest Hits here on tv.thehundreds.com. You can find us here every week, Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am joined with my co-host, Daniel Awad. What's good, dude? Feeling good to be here, man. Episode four. Okay, so every Tuesday we'll pull timeless classics out of the vault, tell you the stories behind each of them, as well as talk to some of the creatives that helped bring them to life. While you watch, hit the chat tab to talk with the rest of the community. Then, you can add today's pieces for your personal collection by clicking the shopping cart tab. But don't sleep, because these guys go fast. All right, so to start off this week's haul from the vault, we're gonna look at the fried t-shirt. So this is a direct rip of Kentucky Fried Movie. A very, very, very awful satirical movie from the 80s. Now, if you look at IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes, I think this shit legit has like 17% on the tomato. Oh my goodness. Very, very bad, but <laughs> It's kind of like one of those movies where it's like so bad it's good. Yeah. You know what I mean, part of that like sort of 80s nostalgia where like a lot, most of the movies from the 80s are bad. Like those people. It's probably like some cult shit that yeah, some, some dudes shit, fuck like, with. You know what I mean? Just like the re, like reanimator or something like that. This is like cult classic for like no reason. But <laughs> still holds true to the Hunters community because this t-shirt was a big influence on Bobby. And For sure. Yeah. So this specific design from the Hunters actually has a lot of brand history rolled into one. It has a ton of movie references, political references, and sneaker references. Those are three kind of pillars of things that you can kind of see in our graphic design throughout the years. Yep. So with those design elements I was talking about earlier, if you take a look, you can note that Lady Liberty, her torch has gone out. She is decaying, she is cracking from her foundations. Um, this is a movie rip of the graphic Fried Kentucky movie. Um, and then also there's a sneaker reference with the Converse. So, kind of encapsulates a lot of Hunter's design elements in one platform. Daniel, what you got? I definitely like the sneaker iteration of it, being a sneakerhead myself. Um, this particular shoe is one of Bobby's favorites, the Converse All-Star. So, he definitely had his way with it, and he made the tongue a forked tongue to give it a kind of an evil look, as opposed to the actual uh, movie poster, which had a normal uh, almost Rolling Stones looking tongue. Um, they also took the uh, original uh, font that was used for the film poster and flipped it to say the hundreds. All right, so now let's move on to actually one of my favorite shirts within the whole hundreds archive. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, big bite to chew. But you know, I come from punk rock and I really relate and resonate with a lot of the graphics on the shirt. So up next is the flyer t-shirt. Okay, so in the punk rock world, before the internet, all of the information in terms of like what was happening in the scene, where to see what band, who's coming into town when, it was all flyers, right? It was all wheat paste campaigns, it was all flyers, it was all word of mouth and so, the art direction behind punk rock flyers quickly became this coveted thing, right? And it like immediately built the relationship between artists and musicians in the punk rock scene, right? For sure. So if you look at that historically, the show's only gonna be as good as your flyer, right? Because you can't go on Spotify and listen to the band right away. You gotta like look at the flyer, oh, this shit looks tight, let me go figure out what this is. For right? sure. You actually had to dig, you know what I mean? You had to find, you, like like digging through crates, you know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the music wasn't just like laid out for you. You couldn't just go check out New Music Fridays on Spotify and have a bunch <laughs> of fucking shit jam down your throat. No, you had to figure out who you were where you were and where the like-minded community of people were. And yeah. all of that information was kind of relayed through a flyer. So with this flyer t-shirt, it takes a lot of 70s and 80s punk rock elements in design, you know, smashing Nazi symbols, um, just like the general aesthetic is very dark, very punk rock, all black. And we kind of reworked it and a lot of these bands that have influenced us over the years and over the decades and over the time, we've kind of replaced with hundreds of catchphrases and other stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, like for instance, the Bridge Burners, you know what I mean? Um, drawing black lines since 1980. Now the brand wasn't formed in 1980, but that was the year that Ben and Bobby were born. And in a way, the hundreds is a retrospective of their lives individually in perspective. That's right. So when we say since 1980, it doesn't mean the brand has been making t-shirts since 1980. It's the story of the hundreds started in 1980, right? And so just some other things to pull, uh, to like 
you know, we got a Lost Boys thing. It brings us back to episode one when we covered the Lost Boys t-shirt, that kind of coming back into fruit, uh, that kind of coming back into the fold. And then, yeah, and you know, I come from punk rock, so like after the show, you would find out where the flyer was, steal the flyer off the wall of the club and take it home and have it forever. Yeah. Bob, yeah, Bobby's, uh, Bobby's love for the punk scene uh, opened up some future projects with artists that would work on flyers, such as Frank Kozik. If you remember, just a couple months ago, we did a special release with him. Um, but there was, you know, it's, it's artwork like his that really paved the way for some of these flyers. For sure, and if you like look back at some of the editorial content that we did around Frank Kozik, he pretty much drew some of the sickest album covers of the 80s and 90s that like ever existed. So like some of these cold classic bands, Frank Kozik probably graphic designed it. Definitely. So back to the flyer t-shirt, actually this is one of the pieces we got to feature in our lookbook as well. Oh yeah. Um, so I was really excited to debut this piece because we've been sitting on it for a while and waiting for the right moment to like, you know, put it back up on greatest hits. And so for me, the flyer t-shirt, a one example. Okay, so that was the Flyer t-shirt for sale now. And if you're just joining us, you are watching greatest hits that you can find on tv.thehundreds.com every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Live Shopping Network. You can check out the Shopping Cart tab, cop these pieces for your personal collection. So don't sleep, everybody. Get them while they're hot. Get them while they're hot, right off the press. Okay, so let's go to this guy. I found this tee really, really interesting. All right, good. So, a lot of the time when we're dealing with vintage pieces, part of having a vintage piece of streetwear in general is about the wear and aesthetic. You know, sometimes with the vintage look and other worn pieces, you don't want things to be dead stock. You don't want them to be brand new. You want them to kind of age accordingly. You know what I mean? It's like a fine wine. You know what I mean? You don't drink wine right off the vine. You gotta let it age. You gotta let it sit a little bit. And that friction over time kind of creates a very unique aesthetic. That's exactly what you can see with the fading on this t-shirt. So it's not like we're just show, uh, selling an old raggedy faded t-shirt. No, this is something that has been curated and intentionally placed to show that the Hundreds has been around. The Hundreds is now has enough brand heritage that we can do a show like Greatest Yes, yeah. It's got and a so, lot of character. Awa, you kind of knew a lot of the movies about this. On of You kind of knew a lot of the cars that were on this t-shirt from certain movies and pop culture references. Yeah. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of a rundown of what you see? Oh man, if you start from the top here, you can see uh, this particular van is from uh, the Ninja Turtles. That's what they would be driving. You also have the Mystery Machine. Uh, this has the Hundreds logo on it. Uh, this ship is from the Jetsons, if you're familiar with that show. Uh, we, I think we deduced that this was the Knight Rider car uh, kit, right? <laughs> and that then, was a Hasselhoff show? Yes. Fucking Knight Rider. That <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, we also have the A-Team van. We also have the... A pivot. <laughs> we also have this car from uh, Dumb and Dumber. What was the name of the company? Uh, Mutton Cuts. Mutton Cuts, Is that what it was? yes. Yo, those dudes are so fucking dumb. <laughs> I remember, love when like, remember when they're like trying to figure out whose briefcase it is and they're like, oh wait, it says it on the side, it's Samsonite. <laughs> it's like, bro, I'll never forget watching that shit in like 96 or 7 or whatever. So good. Also, Jim Carrey had a fucking era. He had Dumb and Dumber, Liar Liar, Ace Ventura 1 and 2. Also, the beginning of Ace Ventura 2 is like so fucking sad. With the raccoon? With the little, yeah, with the little, it was a monkey, I thought. A little monkey that like is trying to go across like, no, 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 no. No, it was a raccoon. Like, it was a raccoon? Yeah, yeah. All right, whatever, Avon. <laughs> uh, this is Ecto-1 from uh, Ghostbusters. And then Bobby pointed this one out that I didn't even notice until he pointed it out. There's an X-Wing from Star Wars coming out the windshield of the mystery machine. Okay, so pop quiz, how do you spell ectoplasm, go? Ho! Oh! Yeah, you got, stumped me on that one. Huh. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is really cool. Again, it kind of plays back to the, uh, Kentucky Fried T-shirt, the Fried T-shirt we were going on, going through earlier. It's um, the Hundreds is very, very influenced by movies, you know. Which is weird though. What I'm noticing is where is the DeLorean? Oh, right. Bobby, you made a mistake on this tee, buddy. What's going on here? Right, you would think, or maybe the DeLorean is in too high of standards to be demolished. Maybe that's why it's missing. <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, you can't really crush that thing. It's all, it's like all steel. Steel. Like steel. Whatever the <laughs> fuck that crazy ass dude was making his cars out of. Right. So yeah, this is the wrecking t-shirt. Um, again, like AY was saying, taking a bunch of culturally significant movie moments where the cars kind of became bigger than the movie themselves. Yeah. 
and yeah, we wanted to junk them, put them in the junkyard. Up next, we are going to go through probably the greatest hit of the greatest hits, something that has existed in the hundreds, seen in world for what, 17, 15 to 17 years now? Just about, yeah. Honestly kind of put the hundreds on the map and actually provided the growth for the business to develop to the next level, right? Because like, right. this is one of the t-shirts that they sold a shit ton of, actually made so much money they were able to invest in an actual storefront. Correct. So up next we have the Paisley t-shirt. So a couple things that are very, very cool about this Paisley t-shirt just to off rip, this is a dead stock t-shirt. Kind of crazy to see something from 15 years ago with dead stock tags. Sheesh. Um, couple just brief things about this. This is an all over print Paisley t-shirt. Now when this was dropped, Fairfax was fucking going crazy. Now, Awad, I feel like you were kind of more of a time and place guy. Can you tell us a little bit about this t-shirt? It was 2003. <laughs> no, it was actually around 2005 when this came out. But basically, this was around the time when Bobby and Ben were looking to solidify the brand that is the hundreds. Uh, this particular process for printing this shirt is not the easiest thing to do because it involves using a, a belt printer of some sort which allows it to go over the seams on a t-shirt, which you will see uh, in detailed photos. Uh, it also dips into the ribbing of the, of the collar, um, giving this all over effect, uh, which is something that was very popular in the early 2000s. And um, you'll see that our version of it actually did a, <laughs> a lot better than we expected it to. So yeah, it sold out immediately, right? And they actually had to cancel a bunch of orders. It oversold. It oversold, yeah. right? It oversold. And then this was kind of the gateway for them. They got so banded up off this release is actually what enabled them to cop a storefront. Right? That's right. So just a little bit of a, so I'm a history nerd here. Clearly I'm fucking hosting a show about old t-shirts, right? Clearly I like history, but something about the Paisley design in general. Um, so this design is literally like thousands of years old. Oh, right? for sure. Paisley can be seen dated back to ancient drawings in the Fertile Crescent, right? Because it's based around the cypress tree, right? So this is seen very heavily in Persian design, a lot of Arab design in general and design comes from the Middle East. Um, also, in terms of color development, the Paisley graphic, if you think of like a Paisley carpet or something very psychedelic, very, very 70s, yeah. right? That all comes from like ancient art direction, right? So great. And so it's really cool to see such a staple design throughout human history. I'm not talking about like t-shirts, I'm talking about like civilization at this point, right? <laughs> that we have seen such a common uh, symbol that has like kind of transcended from ancient culture to now like fucking Fairfax in 2005, yeah. right? It's really made its way. It's really made its way. And so this is our 2005 take on it. We actually had a Paisley collection that dropped earlier this year too, um, that did extremely well for us. And it was really cool to just kind of like remarket, reboot and reestablish the Paisley print in the hundreds vocabulary. And if you have been a avid follower of our greatest hits shopping site, you will have noticed that we have sold at least two or three of these before this. Sure. Yeah, so. So we sold a purple one and two navies? So navy, purple, and red. Yeah. Ooh, the red one. Yeah. Forgot about this one. I know. So this one's red, this is black on black. Black on black, dead stock. Well, I guess it's technically like a slate gray, but black on black effect. That's a good color, yeah. And this can be yours, 2X, for sale right now on Greatest Hits. And again, this is a live shopping network. So everything we have covered on today's episode is currently for sale on the shopping cart tab. Now, unfortunately, with that said, we are out of time for this episode. We have gone through the pieces from the vault this week and we will see you next week for sure, every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, special shout out to anybody who copped a piece and anybody who tuned in. We really, really appreciate it. We really, really love sharing these stories with you. As always, I am Free J Boozy. I'm Awad. And we'll catch you next week.